Let's make a vegan stuffing, also known as dressing, depending on where you're from. Okay, so this is for, you know, stuffing. It's like what you would, in a previous life, I would have put into a turkey. But uh, today, we're just going to make the stuffing. We actually did a tofurkey clone video already, and that works really, really well as a loaf. For this, I need half a loaf of bread. Now, I happen to be using whole wheat. You can use the bread of your choice. The exact bread is not really crucial. Just use something that you like. Now, this makes enough for several servings. Um, this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slices of bread. That's a very easy way to do it. And what we want to do is get it into manageable piles and cut it into cubes. I want the cubes to be mm, no more than, say, half inch or so, uh, because then it just gets to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to just take my knife and start cutting. If you crush it a little, that is not really a big deal. There's no real simple, simple way to cut bread, believe it or not. Once you start working with multiple pieces. Okay, and then I'm gonna just line them up and cut again. I have here a sheet pan. I'm just gonna get them onto my sheet pan. Try to spread them out a little so they're not right on top of each other. See, they're already bouncing right back, the ones that got smushed up a little. I'm just gonna keep cutting this bread. Be back with you when I'm done with that. And once it's all cut up, you want to disperse it pretty evenly on that cookie sheet because uh, we're going to dry this bread out. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The Celsius will be right here because I don't know it off the top of my head. Just looking for any pieces that maybe got missed or got stuck together. And into the oven. It takes about an hour, okay? You want to check on it after an hour and see if it's ready. If it feels like croutons, you're good to go. While the bread is drying, what I like to do is start some mushrooms. And yes, I know, mushrooms sounds like a weird ingredient to put into stuffing, but trust me on this, works really, really well. For those of you that used to like to eat oyster stuffing, this might actually sound familiar. So I have a pan on our burner here on high with about that much water in there. Not a tremendous amount of water because we're gonna boil all that off. This is my mushroom method, as you might've seen before. And what I wanna do is cut all of these into bits. See how they're like that? I, I'm going to cut that in half again once I get all of them together. Just going for like eighth inch or so strips of the mushroom. They do swell up as they cook. And then I'm just going to, you know, cut all these in half. Bits of mushrooms. Throw them into the water. All the uh, little scraps and everything goes right in there. I'm just going to cut up the rest of these and I'll show you when I'm done. In another video, I spoke about uh, cooking the mushrooms first and then cutting them. I have actually since figured out that you can cut them just as easily when they're dry, and it's actually a little bit simpler. It makes the process a whole lot quicker, too. Now that our mushrooms are all added to the water, just going to make sure that they're all getting wet in there. What's going to happen is this water is going to come to a boil. It's going to start to hydrate the mushrooms. You can see some of them are already starting to hydrate but it'll also extract some of the flavors into the water. But then as the water evaporates from boiling, it's going to suck that right back into the mushrooms, creating a very beautiful texture on the mushroom, as well as incredible umami flavor, which is gonna to add to our stuffing. I did this for Thanksgiving this past year, and it was fantastic. Everybody loved it. It does take a little time to get it to a boil and boil off all that water, but trust me, your patience will be rewarded. So after a few minutes, you can see most of the liquid is gone. What I want to do is hit it with a little bit of oil so that they don't stick once all the oil is gone. But I do actually want it to go away completely so we can get a little color on these. But you can see there's still some liquid. It'll go away. As you can tell from my steamy lens, the liquid is just about gone. And we are now down to frying those mushrooms. I'm going to turn the heat down to about two and a half. Mine only goes to five, so that's like medium heat and continue frying them. What I'm looking for is just a little bit of color on these mushrooms. Apparently the steam is just going to inundate my lens today. And once I see a little bit of browning on those mushrooms, I'm gonna cut the heat, take them off the heat, and set them to the side to cool. Okay, now it's time to get working on the veg. So first, I wanna get a bouillon broth made. Now you can use just regular veggie broth, but I like to use this. This is better than bouillon. This is the vegetarian no chicken base. So this is a vegan product. And I'm gonna eyeball about a teaspoon, 
put that into some warm water. Makes a really nice chicken flavor. Works really, really well for this particular stuffing. And set that to the side, let that hydrate up. And now we're gonna chop up our veg. Now, for veg, I use a whole carrot, two ribs of celery, and one onion. Now, the carrot is optional. If you don't wanna put carrot in, don't, but I like to, because it adds just a little bit extra. So I'm just gonna chop up all of our veg. I am cutting the carrot fairly on the small side, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna get my pan going a little bit here. Get it to about two and a half or so. For this, I like to use vegan butter again. So just a good dollop. I mean, you're using a pretty good amount here, but it's important because it does add a lot of flavor. So I have probably about two tablespoons of vegan butter to cook this in. It adds a ton of flavor to the final product. I'm gonna put my celery and carrots in just because they're in the way. <laughs> now I'll chop up the onion, roughly the same size as everything else. And I'll add the onion to the pan. And give that a mix just to get everything going. I do this over medium heat or so. I like to hear a little bit of sizzle. I'm gonna play with the temperature on this because on the stove is a lot different than on a cooktop like this. These things just do not put out the same power as the stovetop. I will, however, season this with about a half teaspoon of salt and some fresh cracked black pepper, as much as you like. Probably a quarter to a half a teaspoon is sufficient though. I wanna cook those veggies until they're, you know, pretty softened. That's what we're looking for, softened. Okay, after about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes or so, just before they start getting some color on them is when I wanna start putting everything together. So I'm gonna get our mushrooms and drop them right in. Make sure you get all the juices in that pan if you can. Use a squeegee if you want to, to get it all out. That's the good stuff. Give that a good mix. Now I'm gonna turn the heat off because I really don't need the heat at this point. Do wanna keep mixing it through. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of dry thyme. You can use fresh if you really want to. I find dry works just as well. And two teaspoons of dried sage. And I wanna mix that all through. And it immediately smells like stuffing. And now I wanna start introducing the bread into this mixture. The bread, as you can hear, do you hear that? It should be quite dry. I'm gonna start adding handfuls at a time. If you have a huge bowl or something to do this in, I suggest you do it that way. I'm doing it the hard way just to show you. I'm gonna start adding some of our broth. See, there's that broth that we made earlier, just a little bit at a time. That was about a third of a cup, almost a half a cup, and mix it through. You don't wanna break up the bread, but you wanna let it absorb. Get more of our bread. Mm, looks like it's all gonna fit. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay, now that I have all that in there, I'm gonna add in the rest of our broth. Looks like I'm gonna need it all. Might even need a little bit more water. I wanna mix this through and get it softened. That's what we're looking for, just good absorption of everything. Definitely looks like I need a little bit more water. Of course, I'm saying water, but that could be broth, veggie broth, whatever you'd like to add is totally fine. At this point, all the flavor is in here, so a little water isn't gonna hurt anything. Got some dry spots. Let me just, all the rest in. So that ended up being about, well, a cup and a half plus the bouillon. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's a cup and a half of water instead of the cup. And I think we are pretty well moistened all around. I'll just get our casserole dish ready. This happens to be, oh, what size is this one? This is an eight by 11. Looks like it's about the right size. And I'm just gonna start dishing it in. Once it's all in, just kinda push it into the sides. You don't wanna pack it down. You want it to stay light and airy. Next, I'm gonna cover this with aluminum foil. That way we can bake it without it browning too much. Okay, into a 375 degree Fahrenheit, I'll put the Celsius right here, oven for about 45 minutes. And then I'll show you what comes next. All right, 45 minutes has passed. Take the tin foil off and put it back in the oven for eh, about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Check on it. If it starts to get too much color, take it out. And after 20 minutes in the oven, getting a little crispy on the top, it's ready to go. So let me uh, take a quick bite here. Try to get a little bit of everything in there. Some mushroom, some of the stuffing, some of the veggies. Oh, I missed a carrot. Got to get a carrot. 
It's really hot, but I will suffer for you. Mm. It's warm, comforting. The herbs come through just beautifully. I think the carrot adds that touch of sweetness that's kind of missing from stuffing sometimes. Plus, a little extra nutrition isn't a bad thing, right? The mushrooms actually make this incredible umami flavor in the stuffing. Really, really amazing stuff. If you've never tried to make stuffing for yourself, this is a very easy way to get started on it. And of course, you can alter it to taste however you like. But as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bistro.